every single, but preceded every single one of those civil rights bills in 64, 65, and 68 were actually race riots. 68, you were coming off of 1967, the Conan Commission report, Dr. King's book, Where Do We Go From Here, also dealt with that whole issue. All those riots were, were preceded by police brutality. And so what, one of the issues that they were protesting was exactly what NFL players are protesting, police brutality. I, I think that it would be a bit disingenuous to say that John Carlos and Tommy Smith were protesting police brutality. I, I'm sure that was quite possibly part of it, but... No, not possibly. That was one of the issues. I, I, I would say that, you know, at that time, segregation was still in full effect. There were still laws, I think, in effect that discriminated against us. As it relates to police brutality in 2018, Roland, uh, the government <clears throat> is highly motivated to try to prevent police brutality. Which the government? The American government. But which one? The NBA county. They're all because of Roland, this is where the capitalist society, when these deaths happen, there are government Pay up. The taxpayers get taxed. There's right. million dollar settlements, things like that. The government is, has great enthusiasm to stop police brutality because it costs money. But they, but they the are. Let me finish. The government is very enthusiastic about incarceration. What the government wants is to politely take people to jail and prisons. That's a money making venture. The government has no interest in a handful, 20, 100, 200. They don't have an interest in two or three hundred people getting killed by the police. It's a money loser for them. Right, but, it, but, that's, but if you have New York, if you have the city of New York, where they spent nearly half a billion dollars in settlements over a decade. Right. You look at the same thing in Chicago. The reality is those things are continually. And you look at what happened in a, well, there's a city, city in Michigan. You had a police officer who pulled a black man over, planted drugs on him, beat him, and to raise taxes to pay the settlement. The reality is you're still seeing the payout. You're still seeing the seventh multi-million dollar seller. I get it, but most rolling, there's no job where people operate in perfection. There's, there's just no job. And police have a very difficult job. They're underpaid, they're undertrained. Uh, that we're in the most armed society, perhaps in the history of the planet in the world. Anytime you have a society this armed, there are going to be mistakes made. And again, do we overlook them? No, I'm not saying overlook them. But to sit here and pretend like, because it's popular over Twitter, that there's an epidemic of police killing uh, African Americans or just Americans in jail, it's just not true. Well, it's nothing to do with Twitter. The reality is this here. First of all, I don't say somebody being shot and killed is somebody not being perfect or a mistake. That's debt. No one can return from debt. I was, I was, I was, I was, well, I can't get into, it's, it's disingenuous to get into some emotional conversation or illogical yeah, conversation. Exactly. Again, you're, you're running around with buzzwords. I'm talking about this conversation of trying to pretend like the police and the government have any interest in any citizen getting killed. They don't. They're highly motivated because of. The real plan is mass incarceration. It's not killing people in the street. Yes, it's with such a small number, and, and I get it. But in this society, where gun violence is this prevalent, there are going to be mistakes made by the police. Just what <laughs> <laughs> so, so the difference between mistakes being made and what you have. First of all, I've covered city go. Gotcha. I've covered county go. Gotcha. Uh, I've actually been in the room uh, when uh, politicians were having to deal with these issues. The reality is this, we do you have cases, numerous cases, not a handful, we have numerous cases that first of all run again. The city, the city of Cleveland is on their second consent decree in a decade. When you look at when Mitchell Anchor became mayor of New Orleans, we called the end of Hartley Justice uh, to look at that, that, that police department that had decades of corruption. Ramsey with the petty sheep in uh, Philadelphia, he called in DOJ. Same thing. We know, of course, the history of Los Angeles and the history in New York. And so this is not just a matter, I believe, of players protesting just in case of somebody being shot and killed. If all of those folks who are being beaten, we have Chicago cops in the case of LaFarma Farmer Dom, who, first of all, lied, flat out lied. Then you had cops who went to the Burger King, they had surveyed this video, and erased the video. They actually erased the video. Then they all lied and covered for each other. That, that, and then there are multiple cases in Chicago. John Burgess just died, of course, 
uh, being tortured up as a 40 black man. That, that's not mistakes. The dog, that, that is culture. Do the police have a culture of excessive force? Perhaps they do and probably they do. Does our, is our government highly motivated to try to prevent it? Absolutely they so are. Why did Because we're not in a perfect society. People make mistakes. They hire the wall of people. It's hard to have a perfect culture. We did lose her. There's no perfect. job. It's like a doctor. Doctors make mistakes. Right. All the time. People driving cars make mistakes and kill people. People shoot and kill each other because they're making mistakes. They get too emotional. They're too filled with hatred, whatever. Human beings are flawed and they make mistakes. And so, roll it out. I get it. The, a lot of this stuff plays great on Twitter. No, it's just in the day. But the other thing with Twitter, I'll forgive you and yeah, say Twitter. Twitter. Because, I, because I'm aware of most black media people and most media people in jail do everything to build their Twitter brand and protect their Twitter bounce. That's, 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 that's Twitter where Twitter. their past and come from. Some are you as some on the late black newspapers, bro, before Twitter existed, this was an issue. And as someone who has buried a family member because of police misconduct, someone very close to me in my family, I get the emotion when the police misconduct. I, I, I helped raise a relative who was killed by police. I get it. But the solution isn't this. We're going to monitor the police over Twitter or through Twitter and point out every example of what's going on with the police when they do wrong. That's not the solution. So what's the solution? The solution is we have to acknowledge the government is already motivated to prevent police violence and police misconduct because it's a money loser we're in a capitalistic society. The issue that we have here has been the over-criminalization of poor people, and mass incarceration is actually the problem. The hot-button issue that will get you on TV and build you a Twitter following is going to run around at micromanaging the police and pointing out everything that they do wrong. If they did that to me or you about things that we do wrong on our jobs, trust me, they can find examples time after time after time. This complete demonization of the police is inappropriate for us because we live in communities where we need the police, we need to recognize the police, make very little money, get very little training. They're the common man. If they want to get upset with someone, get upset with the politicians and the government officials who have put laws in place to criminalize the behaviors that go well, in our Baltimore community. But here's the law. Because we're not doing both. No, but actually, here's the reason. The interesting thing is that, first of all, one reason is why we have still a change in many of the faults. Is the call you got what law? Well, first of first of all, uh, ten years ago, five years ago, you did not have a level of first by the family you have not. That's first. Second of all, you also have not had the level of scrutiny of police departments to change this practice as a result. One of the issues that you have is you have strong collective bargaining get contracts where you have police, the police departments in terms of what they can and can't I'm big. We need that Amber Dider right now in Dallas, who based upon that contract, did not have to speak for three days, did not have to actually t say what happened. She put the three days, she could, she could not say anything, and then, according to their contract, is allowed to proceed an affidavit that actually was written by a police Wrong officer. Wrong so well, what is the reality of facts? Uh, having been black for 51 years, having my father doing business in the black community my entire life, having grown up in the black community. Well, we can focus on the, let's say, 100 mistakes that police make every year. It's more than 100 days. But we know what is going on in our communities and where our children, who are killing our children. And so we can spend all this time Focused on let's demonize the police, let's criticize the police. They need not to believe the things. And so I know if killed, if somebody gets killed, and if you have, in Chicago, for instance, it's a judge. I don't care who's doing the killing. No, no, no. no. Okay. There's a judge in Chicago, for example. The judge in Chicago, who's two schools saw eight cops lie on his witness. Center. He reports them to a police accountability board. Nothing is done. This judge comes back and says, they're lying. They're flat up lying 
He's saying it. If you're going to be protecting the shark, if you have a better team, you're going to go. He said, but to see me, you're actually lying and witnessing. I would think if we were about justice, we would, we would say, you know what? We don't need cops to lie. We don't need cops. I mean, you may say, look, well, that's the point issue. You lie, see. We also don't need journalists who take an issue that we're having in the black community, done violence, and the death of our young people. And for black men, 18 to 24, our leading cause of death is homicide. We don't need journalists who, who will say, no, 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 let's focus on this smaller issue that's damaging the other black men and ignore this issue and have all the no, no, no. you know it right now no, and have all the conversation about this issue and all the athletes take the knee about this issue instead of us as black people say, hold on, we have some issues in our community, there's some things we can do and there's some things we can ask the government to do and, and, and again, the government is already highly motivated to prevent police brutality. They're not highly motivated to fix a corrupt criminal justice system that over-criminalizes our behavior or has a little massive incarceration. Right before, there's no role, role in it. Oh, what I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to say, role in it, right there, and what I do for a living is mostly talk about sports. I'm not an expert on the police. I think athletes have gone too far with the virtue signal and taking a knee. It's the approach that hasn't contributed to anything but a discussion about the national anthem. And so I get it would it's great for your show and your Twitter following to get a sports writer knee deep in a conversation about the police. Oh, I'm, I'm primarily a sports writer. I can talk about athletes and things like that. I can sit here if I wanted to all day, but it's a distraction and I'm not willing well, to. Well, it used to be so. It used to be so. First and foremost, there are multiple, multiple issues that I want to bring up. What? I brought that one up specifically because I know for facts, I was looking at, looking at what's about 50 years ago and those protests, they, that, that was indeed one of the three years. Those athletes created a conversation about the mistreatment of African Americans of 1968. The athletes right now are not creating the conversation about the mistreatment of African Americans right now. They're creating a conversation about the appropriateness of take protesting during oh, the national anthem. That's, 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 that's what the conversation is for you know, the last three years. I think that's the difference between what the athletes were protesting and what their issues were, and then what other people wanted to focus on. And I've seen that. I've seen that even that politics. I've seen it where both of our kids, it. Well, they don't want to talk about that, but they want to think about the end. So those it's athletes and Martin Luther King and the people of that generation were far more strategic about getting people to talk about what they actually wanted them to talk about. These athletes have not acted in a strategic fashion. Colin Kaepernick has it, and he created a conversation about the national anthem, which is a waste of time. Good and that's the difference between Tommy Smith and John Carlos, who at that time were being uh, mentored by Dr. Harry Edwards, and that's why their approach was more strategic and more effective rather than Colin Kaepernick and these athletes just freelancing and create a conversation about the Nat Orange. So, but you completely dismiss the thing that Colin Kaepernick has done in terms of uh, the workshops and through the that he voted. I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't dismiss them, but I think... Wait, 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 I didn't. Let me answer the question. I think they've mostly been a PR move by Colin Kaepernick after getting a lot out of the NFL and he's involved in a fight against the NFL. I think most of it is a PR move. I can't diss it. It's, it's help. It's you all this PR move. What is it? Have you ever talked to Kyle Barron? I've been to the press conferences. No, I haven't talked to Kyle Kaepernick. Kyle Kaepernick doesn't talk. No, no, no. no, no but I, first of all, I'm, I, 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 first of all, he does talk. But, I mean, the deputy he talks to, I talked with him. Well, great. Well, no, no, no. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Muhammad Ali and all these people y'all analogizing to what they're afraid to come no, out first of all, and deal with their critics and back up their point of view with their own mouth and words, not speaking with people in private, not tweeting out this or that, not hiding behind a bunch of groupies in the media that think Colin Kaepernick is something special. But Colin Kaepernick has spoken. Colin Kaepernick has a, so, but well, not in the real way. No, well, but, but again, no, 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 but first of all, you say he has it, and then you say not in a not real in way. The, but but it's when we say a real way. So so what do you want what do you want Kyle Kaepernick to do? Well what do you so if I want to take that ball of a stance, I would do what I'm doing right now. Come it out that someone is a critic of mine and sit down with a little bit of dress. But, yes. but there are folks who have different approaches. And I've I've seen this across the board. 
I've seen it. You had every excuse for this game. No, no, no. Hold on. I'm not offering one of the most polarized. I'm not offering the excuse. And I'm saying it right. And he's afraid to back it up. As somebody who is who's been on the news side, who's been on the culture side, somebody who's dealt with folks. You talking about what your job is, okay? That's what your lane is. I have dealt with a number of people who have said, you know what? There's some people who are out front. There are other people who are not. There are some people who choose to speak in certain venues a certain way, others who don't. So everybody has their own way of communicating. And so you can say, well, I want him to do more. Okay, I got you. Okay, but that's what he has chosen, cho- chosen to do. But when, but when we look at the value of in terms of creating conversations, I do believe that this thing goes beyond just in terms of the protests and just them kneeling. Which first of all, was to bring attention to the issue. Other folk with other agendas still don't want to deal with that because they want to say that's irrelevant. They want to flip this whole thing into a flag and say, oh, it's about disrespecting America. You also have players who are involved in politics. You have a LeBron James, okay, when it comes to education, when it comes to his taking a stance. Uh, you have presented LeBron James even coming to Los Angeles as basically doing the bidding of white liberals. So, so I don't understand I, why said it's a Hollywood move. Okay, but, 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 but why can't why can't we look at what LeBron is doing beyond basketball and realize that if we say we want Adam Lee's doing this, 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 and he's doing it, but now it's, he's in the beginning of white liberals? Lord, you're talking about what you and others want athletes to do, this, this, and this. But you do. No, 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 no. You can't speak for me, Lord. Let me but you said what side. you want athletes to do. You want them to know about it? You said you said that you want athletes to put their money together and be able to create business and build institutions in the black community. But you've also called them stupid and dumb for protesting. And it's like, well, they're stupid and dumb. Are they stupid and dumb for their money together? Uh, Roller, you know, I've done some stupid and dumb things in my life. And so when people have pointed out that I'm stupid, that's stupid and dumb. I don't take. I've done a stupid and dumb thing. That doesn't make me a dumb person. And so I'm a critic. That's my job. I'm a journalist. I'm not a groupie. I'm not here to be best friends with every athlete in the world. I don't care to DM and hang out with them at parties. I'm a critic. That's my job. And so sometimes I criticize a lot. Sometimes I praise a lot. I love what he's done with the school. I like. I would like for athletes to take their money and resources and use them to support the causes they believe in. Because that's what millionaires and billionaires do. Instead of electing themselves as the leaders and the intellectual thought leaders. I'm not with that. Cool. And so, so uh, well, now, I don't which yeah, no, which happens? Which happens in elected themselves with intellectual bodies? Oh, Malcolm Jenkins. A lot of these athletes you just praise because what well, I'm telling you, what millionaires and billionaires do, celebrities and things like that, they're not equipped to be the intellectual thought lead. And so they should take their money, like other white millionaires and billionaires do, and invest in people who are actually dedicated to this. Not people that have been dedicated to developing themselves and that's what they're but they're not convinced themselves in like your thought leaders. What they're doing is they're saying is as an athlete, if I want to speak on these issues, and many of them say and coming from hold a second, yeah. many of them say coming from those communities, many of them say still dealing with those issues. Now how is all of a sudden the intellectual thought leaders? They are well, they're so saying, I don't know what they're talking about, uh uh, well, Jason, a lot of say, you know what you're talking about. I got it. And they're, they're more than welcome to that opinion. I'm not going to demonize them as racist. I'm not going to demonize them as self. They can have that opinion. But what I'm talking about with athletes who have turned into millionaire celebrities, they're not John Carlos and Tommy Smith. They're not Muhammad Ali. This is not the 1960s. Muhammad Ali was connected to a black, empowerment religious sect controlled by Elijah Muhammad. Malcolm X. Yes. He, he was connected to something real. That has been our tradition. Connected to the church. This stuff I'm seeing for Baton Beast, there's no connection to the church. There's no spiritual foundation to it. There's nothing. But, but here's so, a piece of but, but first, me, but first these doing way too much. They're not connected. Just like John Carlos and Tommy Smith were connected to Harry Edwards. As the, he was a part of that. I don't see that same connection. I see athletes freelancing and standing on the okay, basis of Twitter, city and guys like you that gas them up and can do no wrong, I'm not with that. Well, first, well, first of all, let's, let's do a couple of corrections. One, when you say can do no wrong, you're wrong. Okay, because as somebody who's actually sat on these panels, as somebody who's actually, no, 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 one second, one second. As someone who's actually had conversations, 
There's a difference between sitting on television and opining and you don't even talk to the guys. But there's a difference when you actually get out from behind the desk and be a journalist and go actually talk to them where they are. I've actually had the conversations with Jenkins, with Ben Watson, with, uh, with, with uh, uh, Bennett, with Colin Kaepernick. And so my perspective in terms of what they're doing is totally different because, frankly, you have it. I have talked to Malcolm Jenkins. So here's the piece. Oh, so, oh, so you oh, talked to Malcolm oh, Jenkins. You, just said I have you I talked have to Malcolm Jenkins. I have. So how, how, how would you say that he doesn't know about these issues when in Philadelphia they made the attempt and brought, brought juvenile justice leaders and brought others to the table to meet with Lori, to meet with Goodell. They actually went out of the community and did that. They've done that. Again, you just, and this is where I'm saying the athletes are wrong because I don't want the athletes getting meetings with Roger Goodell and the owner of the Philadelphia Eagles to, to, to move into a lane they're not qualified for. There are actual people, politicians, community organizers, real people, not just celebrities and names, Roger Goodell, Jeff and Lurie, but there's actually real people who have expertise in these issues. And so, again, I've talked to Malcolm Jenkins rather extensively, here in L.A., where he came out to do our show, sat in my desk for 30, 45 minutes, and we went at it. And I think his intentions are good. I think some of what he's doing is misguided because he's trying to do too much. And so for those of you that think it's great that he got the older and Roger Goodell to meet with somebody about criminal justice reform, I'm, I'm not impressed because that's not Roger Goodell's area of expertise or Jeffrey Moore. But if this isn't your area of expertise, aren't you operating out of your lane? No, my area of expertise is in commenting on athletes. But the commenting but, on mouthing No, but, but, you're also, but you're also commenting on these other issues that have to do with sports. And you're basically saying... Because three athletes are involved in it. Rolling so, 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 so if you say they're not smart enough, what if you're not smart enough? Maybe. So why are you talking about it? Because it's my job. So how about this here? So be it. Uh, rolling, roll, so roll, 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 my job is to talk about athletes and what they have going on. It's my job. But if Malcolm Jenkins chooses to speak to it's not beyond. His job. No, well, hold on. Look, first of all, you, you have passions that go outside of your job. So, for instance, for me, for me, although I'm a journalist, education is one of the issues that I'm concerned about. I created a school choice with a black choice initiative. Although that's not my job. That is still a passion, a crusade of mine. And so, just like when what I do. You yourself into it. But they, when the media have the right to criticize no, it. I understand that. It's not no. an indication that they're doing something inappropriate or wrong. But they may just be doing their job, Roland. But if a person is involved in those issues and they are doing that, and first of all, what I appreciate, I appreciate that there are athletes, that there are entertainers who don't only say, yo, I'm only here to play ball. I appreciate individuals who say, I want to use my platform to go beyond just, uh, just what I've seen as just my job and using their celebrity and using their influence to speak to those issues. I think the difference here is that we got we used to athletes having the nice and neat, okay, foundation, give some books out, have a golf tournament, and sign some jerseys. But when all of a sudden you got some guys who want to go deeper, then it's like, oh, no, no, y'all not smart enough for that. And I, I, well, what I'm saying is I'm encouraged by that because hopefully the other folks who are athletes will realize that you might have a job, but you can, be, you can care more about your life than just your job. You can care about your community. See, I, I think there's a lot of people that care about their community and express their care in different ways. Which is true. And, and so I, I think there's more than one way to express your care for your community. And so I, I, I just happen to believe what Jim Brown believed. And Jim Brown is an athlete that I think dated right. He played his football career, and then he got out of football and involved himself in activities in this community and getting back to this community and trying to be a leader of this community after he was done playing football. Well, after, after he was done, he chose to become a Hollywood star. And, but he was also involved in all the issues before. But let me ask you this question. I, I get it. No, but he was. Well, Roland, I get it. The Jim Browns, Ameri Kenya program, and involvement here in the L.A. community is something that I think should be a role model for a lot of athletes. And I would not appreciate it. Jim Brown 
has been quite clear. Again, when you're playing in the modern NFL, NBA, with all these corporate ties tied to you and all these billion-dollar corporations tied to you, you can't just run out willy-nilly and be an authentic civil rights leader or leader in these political issues because you have too many corporate puppet strings attached to you. But first, so those are just the facts of the modern athlete that are different from the athletes of the past. Well, first, well, first of all, the athletes of the past... First of all, many athletes of the past couldn't do a lot of these things anyway because of the, didn't have the financial wherewithal to actually do it. What you do have is... The financial wherewithal, there are things called golden handcuffs. That's actually what prevents you. And that's, again, why Mahal Ali, in boxing, an individual sport, he was the draw, and because of his connection to the nation of Islam, Elijah Muhammad, he was far more effective than these guys that are out here trying to mimic him now with Nike corporate stays. Well, I think for one, it's a joke. I think one thing is we talk about guys mimicking. I think they're operating and standing in their own because that's two, two totally different deals. I do want to ask you about this. I thought this is interesting. Uh, when LeBron James talked about uh, the N-word being sprayed on, on, his, on this hole, and uh, you said that he had fallen to the far left track of those valiant racing victims of the era. But then you said racism is, is an issue in America that but it's primarily an issue for the poor. It's not LeBron James. He should remove himself from the damages and the ravages of real racist. So are you saying that if you're black and you have money, that you don't encounter racism, that you don't deal with it? No, I think you encounter it. But when you're at LeBron James level, or L even mine, and I'm playing it light years away from LeBron James, it doesn't do real damage. And so let's take what LeBron James is. He was spray painted on his garage. That's a racist act that the N word was spray painted on his duck, on his gate. Did it do any damage to him? He wasn't here. It was removed before the police yeah. even got here. There was no damage done. And so w w we've reduced racism to the whatever little hurt feelings or someone said this or that. Racism is actually something real that damages people. And so when you become the kind of wealth that LeBron James has, and you become an elite. It's damn near like O.J. Simpson and what he got away with. He's an elite. He's super wealthy. But the ravages of racism don't touch him in the same way as it does the poor people. Well, I, well, I so, the, it, so his comments analogizing himself to Emmett Till's mother were preposterous and ridiculous. And anybody with a brain knows. But actually, when you talk about the idea of racism, I'm not just talking about the idea. I'm not about the damn. No, 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 racism. no, no. But I'm trying to take the damn. No, no, no. Actually, no. Someone said. No, actually, actually, no. Actually, we're not. What we're doing is showing actually the gamut of it. So, for instance, when a George Wilborn brother, comedian, done relatively well. When George Wilborn is trying to buy a home in a suburb of Chicago. And then when the owner finds out that he's black, and then George Wilborn, uh, all of a sudden the house gets pulled off. George Wilborn has to sue as a result. George Wilborn encounters racism in when it comes to housing. There, are state, there were Los Angeles charges who said when they actually moved from San Diego, who faced housing discrimination when they were looking to buy a home. Oh, they had money. They were facing housing discrimination. Robert Skitt, richest black man in America, worth $2.7 billion dollars has talked about the numerous times he gets pulled over by the cops in his, in his very expensive car, going to wait his, his private jet is waiting on him because they're not looking at a guy who's got $2.7 billion. They're seeing a black man driving a nice car. The reality is that I don't care what your station is. Bob Johnson, just the other day, because what he dealt with, you can have money in America and you can still deal with racism. The issue, though, is why should we have to say, well, Yours is real and mine is not really real. We don't I'll have to, but we don't have to pretend like LeBron James giving something spray paint on his million, uh, $20 million mansion in Brentwood is in any way equivalent to what happened to end of the end of the time. He's standing and it was ridiculous. Well, first of all, we say equivalent. That's the, I, no, I'm not saying equivalent. You're right. It's not equivalent, but it's not even in the same planet. Rolling, so the damn N word was removed from his gate before he even saw it. Before the police could even get there, it did nothing to him. But we have reality, Jason, of folks who are black in this country who work in places where opportunities are not even being afforded to them. And somebody might say, "Oh, but but you have a nice life." And this black person over here 
No, 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 this isn't about having no, a nice night. No, 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 to go to work and not have somebody do something to us that is racially motivated. And what I'm saying is, the reality here in 2018 is you might have a lot of money, you still are going, you may have to encounter the reality of well, racism in there. And so, if there's any white people watch, what they would argue is, you think nothing ever happens to me bad on the job? Nothing racially motivated ever happens to me on my job? There are white people that look, and again, may not be at the same rate, may not be at the same. Not even close. Not I may, not even close. Oh, who knows? I can't speak for white people. Uh, actually, actually, if you go to the EEOC, you can I, be there. I, can't I mean, because that's where typically the claims are made. I get it. There's, some people make claims, some people don't. Roller. Some people just, that was the nature of beans, or that was some BS that I dealt with, and move on. I can't speak for white people. But what I can say is racist. And what we should be fighting against is the racism that does real damage because it is there. I get for Twitter and for the media and what will get you on TV. See, but you, you see, sit around and some, some athlete LeBron James having the n worst rape pit. Oh, my God. It's, this is almost. So let me ask you a question. Oh, oh, no, no, but let me ask you a question. But they keep saying real damage. Yeah. Do you believe that it is real damages when you have African-Americans who are locked out of Wall Street? Why? Yeah, that's the real thing. Do you believe that we do have, even when you have African Americans who are well, when they're trying to create hedge funds to be able uh, to that's invest in them? Okay. And then also, is it a real thing when you're an African American and you apply for a job and somebody says, oh, we don't like the style of your hair, so that's therefore you can't. Just got you. Well, and so, here's why I think the value of having that conversation, which goes beyond just the inward on, on a game. Is that is, there are people who actually believe, oh, no, no, no. And I'm not talking about LeBron James money. I'm talking about the people who say, oh, no, no, no. You, you, don't, you don't deal with those things. You don't see those things. They are, they are out there. So here's my problem, Roland. What happened to LeBron James doesn't convince those people that these real things actually happen. But what it I, makes them do is say, like, Oh, that's the whiny BS. Oh, and so that's what they do. Well, it's the, and so it, make, it makes it easier to ignore. Actually, the actually, I think you're wrong. But then when you have instances where African Americans who are well known, who have had to encounter the reality of race, other people have said, wait a minute, hold up. If it can happen to them, no, I don't know. No, they don't. See, because, well, but this is the. Are you serious? Yeah, I don't think that's what they do. No. Because, again, well, and you, wow. believe in, you believe in trickle down social justice. Just like Ronald Reagan leading. No, actually, no, 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 actually, because, no, no, actually, no, actually, you're wrong. I deal with too many black leaders. No, no, people. you're wrong. And somehow, we treat LeBron and Sabrina better, Selena better. It's called a trickle down. No. And the people at the bottom. No, are you, no, 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 you are absolutely wrong. So to say that you, that this is what you did, you are 100% wrong. I don't believe in trickle down. Ella Baker, one of the greatest organizers, believed not pulpit to pulpit. Yeah, I was that? Was time talking about LeBron James. No, no, no. And something that I spray painted on this game. So he's really interesting. So, so that's trickle that no, that's it that wasn't damaged. It does not no, 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 no. First of all, if there's an idiot, it is a it's real. No, no, no. See, 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 a white person. Well, here's the piece. We don't even know if it really even happened. But, here, but here's the piece. Here's the piece. You want to limit this to solely LeBron James in the game. I live. No, 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 listen, listen. I lay out for you other examples of well-to-do African Americans who have had to deal with the reality of race. I'm trying to actually have a broader conversation beyond the gate. And what I'm trying to say is not triple down. What I'm trying to say is that you have the individual. There's not a question of, well, your wealth is this, so therefore uh, you really don't experience well, what I'm saying. What I'm saying. No, 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 what's that? No, 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 It gets pulled over. No, first of all, his name is Robert Schmidt. No, 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 no. Here's, here's, Jason, Jason. Here's, here's what I'm. This isn't the great mass. No, 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 Jason. Here's, here's what I, 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 here's what I am saying. What I'm saying is, when Dr. King said we are here to redeem the soul of America, when Dr. King said we are here to make America be the nation it is on paper, not the make, not the nation it is in reality. What I am saying that black folks would want. If that is, whether you are a LeBron James 
or whether you are a middle class teacher or whether you are a brother and sister who live in public housing or a single mother or two parent household. then you know what? We would like to go through this society and not have to deal with the with the issue of race. What I looked at what LeBron was saying is that this is what happened to me. You don't, said you're moving away from don't. LeBron, but you just brought it back. No, 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 because I, I said, I'm told me no, 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 talk about no, 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 the reality is you're still black in America and you're still dealing with the indignities of race. What I would hope people would get out of that example of LeBron is that it's not just, oh, I didn't realize that somebody like him because, I, as a matter of fact, I don't even see him as black. I just sort of see him as sort of something else. Now, I think what you see is something that happens in a fantasy Twitter world. It just doesn't. Oh, happen. this one there, this is Because this is what's going on. But if, again, you have some fantasy about you know, how America works. No, I don't. It's not how it works. Jason, there's a lot of reality, they're, Jason. They're not looking at LeBron James and spray paint. Yeah, you're going, oh, my No, Jason, I, I, and just out reality. But you may have it. See, you, you part of your argument always constantly, well, what happens on Twitter? First of all, there are numerous conversations. There are numerous things that are happening well, not happening on Twitter. You, like a lot of media people, or a slave for your Twitter feed. Wow. Hell, well, you tweeted like 200,000 times. Okay. Everything. Do, I do, 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 do you know what? Do, do, do you know, do you know what? Slaves to their no, Twitter No, no. First, first, it's not a, not a, first it's not a platform for them. First of all, it's, it's not a slave, slave uh, to it. What it is, is, is a communications medium. Okay. Now, as somebody, again, who's actually run three black newspapers, who's been new editor of a black magazine, who's run a black website, who understand how to communicate with the folks, it is a medium. So you operate this well, you're a slave to it. No, I understand what it is. If you have the capacity, let's also, if you really want to expand this, when you're after American who's run a black newspaper, you might have a circulation of 20,000, but yes, you build a following, you could actually reach more people as a platform, and it goes beyond just the traditional following. So that's not a slave, that's knowing how to use it. Rowan, and you know, several times you were Throwing out your credentials as a journalist. And so I, you, but you said I'm a journalist, but go ahead. I said I'm a journalist. I haven't tried to be condescending about my... No, it's not condescending. No, no, Roy, you're acting as if uh, somehow your journalistic experience somehow supersedes mine. And that's no, I'm not acting like that. That's preposterous. But trust me, I understand journalism, and I understand what's going on right now with journalism. The entire media is addicted to Twitter. And Twitter, are you? Absolutely not. Again, am I on it? Do I use it? Absolutely. But I know exactly what it is. So this is so on all, all, all other media, everybody else they haven't figured it out. Everybody else is addicted to Twitter, Twitter, but you, oh no, I'm not. No, no, no. I'm I, the tag of myself. No, 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 no. So I understand what Twitter is doing to us and what it's doing to America, what it's doing to the journalism profession. It's turned everything into clickbait. You can't have real discussion. That's why we spend so much time talking about what got spray painted on LeBron James' fits rather than the crisis we have within our community. But okay. fam, let me finish, Rowan. I get the whole thing of cut me off anytime I get to a point. But rather than dealing with well, the crisis you may want to stop stepping off in our families, in black America, but we're spending time worried about a $20 million mansion that may or may not have had the inward spray painted on, and somehow this is some great example. And see, but we have a complete collapse of the black family that we won't talk about. We have a complete disconnect from God and, 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 and based in this secular world, and that's what Twitter is, and we're all addicted to it, and it's taking us further and further into the secular world, away from God and away from the path that has served and, us best and this, here in America. And this, is, and, and this is a mistake you keep making. You keep saying, oh, we got to have a conversation, conversation, and we got to have it in depth. You act as if, oh, no, we can't talk about that, as if, the, as if we won't cover anything else. Really, as we can't. See, the whole point of this is not to have. What are we talking uh, about? Eight, right no, 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 one second, one second. Hold on, no, right now. You don't ask me not to interrupt you, don't interrupt me. What are we talking about? Right if now? you don't ask me, don't interrupt you, don't interrupt me. What are we talking like about? Like I right said. So let me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me finish my point. Let me finish my point. Okay, but so you don't interrupt. 
because if you want me not to interrupt you, oh, yeah. do the same. The reality is we can have an in-depth conversation. You talk about all these things, but then when you get challenged on it, ooh, I'll be talking about it. The reality is this here. What are you looking at right oh, now? No, hold on, one second, one second. Hold on, hold on. You're interrupting. Hold on, but Jason. I'm not one of Jason, 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 interrupting again. Allow me to finish. I'm not one of Jason, allow me to finish. Bro. Jason, allow me to finish. <laughs> no, you say, oh, why are we talking about this here? Why are we discussing this here? Why are we discussing these things here? Because those are things that you discuss. Those are things that you discuss numerous times. If you don't think that the protesting and the Kyle Kaepernick and that's what you do about nothing, why do you keep talking about it? Because well, what? In fact, your Twitter feed, you, oh, you Twitter, you were, you've you been complaining when he got the war from Harvard. You sent multiple tweets. If there's no big deal, if you everybody else is slave to it. Multiple tweets about what? When Kyle Kaepernick got the award, did he need the war award from Harvard? I said, but I did something about her not, uh, no, you, not staying. You posted about three, no, I'm talking the about three, four tweet. And so, the said what? Here's what's interesting. Said, I'll, 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 I'll pull him up. But what I thought is, it, but, but what I think is interesting is, it really doesn't matter. Why do you keep talking about it? Because, Lord, as I've explained to you, my job is to talk about what's going on in sports and who's making news in the sports world. My job dictates that I talk about Colin Kaepernick. This process was one of the biggest deals in the history of sports. It changed the conversation about the NFL. It's my job. But if you're saying, what's well, no big deal, why don't we talk about it? So let me ask you this question. I have you a night off, man. Well, actually, well, first of all, we all have jobs, but there are a number of things that we can also talk about, and we can actually say, you know what? I don't think that's really important. I can talk about this in sports. I mean, we can actually do that. I have a job that's tied to television rate and, oh. and connected to what the mass of audience wants me to talk about. I can't just talk about what I want to talk about. I have a job. So, have so you're now. So what you're saying is that you talk about these things because it's also part of the radius game. It's part of my job, right? Which, but then you complain. I mean, television, yes, ratings are a part of television, role. Okay, but you, you just, but that. you just complained and whined about people using Twitter for clickbait, which is the same as ratings. It's the exact same thing. Yes, role. You said this is what you said. Too many people in the media are concerned about clickbait. That's what you said. My Twitter. Dude, that's the exact same as you said. Hey, that's about ways. 140 characters to a exactly. reduced it. 280 character reduced dumbed down conversation that makes everybody have a dumbed down. Well, actually, uh, actually, you can now see in tweets, you can actually send about 10, 12 like, consecutively, so it's more than 280. But well, well, point, Jason. That makes everybody have a but Jason, Jason, see, but see, but see, see, this is where I think we're going to be an hypocrite. You just said it's about rating. I got to talk about it. Part of my job is to talk about sports and firmly to drive television rating. Which is clickbait. And if somebody else's job is for you to Twitter for the same thing, but you say they're bad, but you're good. Well, let me answer this question. Twitter's with 18 famous platforms. Well, it's well, controlled well, by people with silicon. Well, well, guess what? Somebody, somebody, somebody sitting right there would say your, your platform for, on my 20th Century Fox is also controlled by somebody else and not controlled by you. No question about it. So there you go. We're 18 days away from the election. You said before, you don't vote. Yeah, I don't. Why? Because I've never trusted a politician a day in my life. I don't believe in politics. I'm not a person who really believes in compromise. And, and politics is mostly about compromise. I, I'm not good at that. So how we came was, I don't trust. Nobody? Them. Not in politics, no. I think it's a very dishonest profession. So all of them? Pretty much, yeah. So when you think about it historically, when you look at the city of Atlanta, when 1973, 0.0012% of all contract, and Mayor Jackson runs, and Mayor Jackson, by virtue of being the mayor of Atlanta, literally changes the course of history for African Americans. He used it through politics. He used the two terms as mayor to change. Coley Young in Detroit, Mary Berry, the same. I don't believe in politics. Yeah. I really don't. So the issues you often talk about how did you ask the politics has no role in that? Excuse me? The issue that you talked about said we should be discussing or dealing with. Well, how about me? Now, I'm not, I'm not giving you the advice. Say you got to follow or believe what Jason Whitlock believes. I'm not, I'm not advising anyone that. But come on, me. But uh, there's uh, uh, what are you things unique in my personality. But if you don't, bro, aren't you part of the problem? If, 
You might argue that. No, 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 Steve. But you might. I don't believe that. No. So, of, so of the things that are happening in our world, yeah. any number of issues. If politics is involved in it, well, then how can we change something for the good if we don't vote for someone who we think will be able to make changes? Because I think politics, the way it's disrupted now, is always going to let you down. I, I think that there's so much dishonesty and corruption in politics that I just don't personally involve myself in it. I, what I believe in, what's best for us and African Americans, is an allegiance to God. I believe that is our salvation. And allegiance, and, and allegiance to God. Far more than politics. You, you do know we politics also deals with God. We have replaced I mean, religion with politics. We have an addiction to politics. Ooh. Ooh. We as black people, we talk about politics from Obama to Trump the way we used to talk about God, and I think it's inappropriate. It's our constant, everyday conversation. If you, this is all part of my problem why I can't stand Twitter and social media. There's a disconnect. It's one of the most secular places you can actually be. I admit, for, if you go look at the Asian American community that has had a lot of success here in America, it's not through politics. It's through an allegiance to themselves and taking care of themselves. That's why I think we've lost force as African Americans. Asian Americans had the same history as black folks in America. I don't think they've had the same history, but I think they've had issues in America, and I think they've addressed their issues by gathering up in their own communities, supporting each other, and supporting themselves, and they're not as heavily involved in politics. I think there was a time when we needed to be heavily, heavily, heavily involved in politics. There were laws on the books that prevented us from pursuing happiness, right. liberty, and things in America. I think we went through that time in the 60s, 50s, 60s, maybe part of the 70s. Again, I'm not suggesting to the rest of the rabbit that you disassociate yourself from politics, but I think we overdose on it. You do. They call you do know. political. I don't. Well, I mean, first of all, it's not, solely, it's not solely political, and also, but it's, just, it's a whole bunch of people who have lots of God, but also have no plan. The reality is, the reality is this here. I, we, we can show the timeline of the role that politics has played actually making our community a better community. But not only making our community a better community, also making our lives in America better. To act as if somehow that's irrelevant is crazy. I and again, it's not for me. I didn't say it was suggested for Wall so, but, 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 so, so, so this is my personal thing. So what are your, let's say your top three issues. What are they? For African Americans? No, no, yeah, for, no, your top three issues. So whether you want to be for black folks or everybody, what are the top three issues? The, the number one issue I think facing the African American Union is our breakdown of sand. And I, th and, and I would couple that with our distancing ourselves from religion. I think those two things go hand in hand. Until we fix the black family and until we get right back with God, nothing good is going to happen for us. But when you say get back with God, there are millions of black folks who are in church of the center, who are in by the center. There are numerous aspects of the in Bible study, they go straight to politics. They turn okay. on but, but, TV and they, they have an addiction to politics. You, you do know we had religious leaders in the 50s and 60s yeah. who were also with Italy involved in politics. Did it. We had laws on the books in the 50s and the 60s that drastically needed to be changed. We still have laws on the books that actually were set during those times that still had to be changed. The Florida Restoration uh, uh, of the Voting Initiatives in right now dates back to a law in the 1880s. The governor of Virginia, who won Terry McCullough, when he wanted to extend voting rights to formerly incarcerated, uh, all 13,000 at one time, the Republicans said no yet new individual. That dated back to a 1902 law where a lawmaker said on the floor, this is, we are doing this to keep the darkies from voting. And so the reality is to act as if somehow politics does not steal happened and hurt us or we somehow can't that. interact with it did it say that so but again though so if for me so I, you know they're involving myself in politics so so and you look at the issues for one issue i heard for three you said you said i really know what happens you said the fact you said the family and the black church family and spirits and spiritual we have disconnected from god and it's a mistake well i would i would argue especially as somebody who's the husband of a minister and in terms of the folks who i also see that significant number of us who are very much uh, there with our religion, but I think there are a whole lot of us 
who also love to talk about what is happening in our society and frankly are sitting on their behinds and not voting when it can actually impact it. See, I, can, I know there are politicians who are good people. There are people who are there to do well, the right thing. If you go study the history of the plan, that the family's not connected, nothing can grow from that. That the family's not together, nothing can grow from that. And so we can put all the laws we want on the book. Yeah, but as far as families are in disarray and our children are being raised by grandmothers and aunties and cousins and things like that, nothing and is what, going to happen. And what as long and what as we, and what are, we got all are disconnected from God, nothing good. And what, but, what, 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 but, but here's what I also realized. They have lived a long time, or a whole lot of us, have been connected to God, have been praising and worshiping, and all of that. And we are still being broke. We are still being locked out. You can be the most holiest of holy person, and you can be on a job, and somebody can make a decision that, no, nah, you ain't getting promoted. You can sit here and lay horns and heal people all you want to, and you can still encounter that. What I am saying is, we can actually do both at the same time. And what I am looking at, and I talk about in terms of what has happened, I think if anybody who reads Dr. King's book, uh, Chaos or Community, where did we go from here? What he laid out in that book where he talked about the institutions that can play a critical role in saving black America. He said the black church. He said the black press. And he said the black professional organizations, which includes fraternity and sorority because of the infrastructure. He dealt with religion, but even Dr. King understood, right in that book in 1967, that we can be as holy as possible, but there are still other aspects of our lives that we must continue with. And to act as if politics and community, you can even say, say, lock them in. My plans were followed of our city club. That's still politics. Because who picks up trash and who cuts out overall uh, lock out it, well, and who tears out the crap in office? That's politics. To me, Family and God, God and family are the foundation. For okay, Dave. Healthy community. Dave. Okay. Healthy group. So what do you do? Foundation's no good. You can stack all the politics on top okay. of what you want. It's going to talk. Okay. So what do you do then? So answer this question. Yeah. What do you do if you're their family and it's mama and dad? And they are holy people. They, they love God and they serve God. But their kids still go to horrible schools. They also are living in areas where you don't have economic opportunity. They are a nuclear family, loving it together. But this, this is their in, this is the inside of the house. This is the rest of the house. How do you deal with that? I say, if politics doesn't matter, I'm not saying that I didn't say politics though. Okay, so okay, it's fine. Okay, so if, if you have this black family that's together, mm -hmm. and they love each other, and then they're praising God, and, and they love God. But then when they step outside of their house, they're still dealing with an economic reality and an education reality and a social reality. What, what cha who, who changes that? How, how, how does that the family... Individual, I know many families like that. Most of my friends come from families like that. And I know how we made it and moved forward. And so, again, if you come from... And I, look, I came from parents that were divorced. Uh, but I know where my grandmama had me and I know where my mama had me and I know what they planted in me. And so, again, there will be obstacles in life. But if, God, if you really have a spirit-filled life and a God-filled life and the right kind of family support, you can overcome those obstacles right here in America. But, again, when you are dealing with all of those realities outside of the home, there are folks who say, I still got to deal with that. I still, I, I still like deal with I, I, hey, Everybody does. Well, no, but but it though. But but, but 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 again, I think holistically is how we have to look at. It. I think I could I think it's frankly naive to think that well, if it's just this, this is coming from somebody. I didn't say they have been married fifty one years. Okay, still together, five kids, four went to college, all of that, but we still are looking at what happens when we still are operating in this society that goes beyond our church, that goes beyond our family, and the stuff that we got to deal with, that's still there. And Roland, I say life is full of challenges for all human beings. That's just 
the way that it is. Life is unfair. Life is hard. What do you do to limit the ability for racism or whatever the obstacles are to impact you moving forward? How do you eliminate that? How, how do you eliminate that? I think you, how did me? I, no, no, I, how, I would say through agitation, through uh, self-responsibility, through accountability for myself, to taking care of myself and not making irresponsible uh, decisions that make it so when I face an obstacle, I'm able to overcome. So if it's, that, that's, that's, so if it's education, yeah. and when we also look at the reality of the type of schools that our children are in, when we look at the inequities, inequities of those schools, not just big city, but also rural as well, again, we could even, first of all, in the history of black folks, in 399 years black folks have been like, in America, we can say, oh, that person, that person, that person, that person, that person. But if you talk about a collective, we still have to accept the reality in terms of where we sit collectively in the United States. And if education is one of those areas, that's one where you damn right we better be involved in politics because that plays a huge role in what, school get, what schools get built, the amount of funding that goes to those schools, so the give us those opportunities. Here's proposition, Roland, is, yeah, let's be involved in, in politics. But let's do it from a foundation of family and God. And then we can start making better decisions when we enter into making those decisions along politics. We have, to me, accepted some giveaways from the Democratic Party that have crippled our faith. Like what? <laughs> the whole welfare system, the whole system, to be quite honest with you, integration was a mistake, bro. And the whole deal of, oh, we're going to go out to these schools and have white teachers teach our kids. That was a mistake. Actually, we shouldn't have been fighting for the better financing for our schools and for black teachers and for, for us to take care of ourselves okay, but Jason, rather than, hey, but, let's but, go out to somebody else's neighborhood and have them take there, care of us. That's, that's, that's a mistake. No, Jason. No, well, first of all, you obviously have not fully studied Brown versus Board of Education and Brown 2. Brown versus Board of Education and Brown 2 were about finances. The whole basis of that was the inequities. It wasn't just, hey, when you, I wanted to learn with some white kids. When the third grade marshal, when they went to spend those. No, 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 and that's where you're wrong. We didn't all run it in. No, we didn't all go into that. What happened to still happened was you had black folks who were saying properly fun. You had people who were yeah. saying, but that's not what we did. No, you should say that's not what we did. You act as if somehow we had this whole other institution that was there. What you should have was you had folks who were saying, okay, this is how we're actually going to uh, uh, move and make this thing possible. Here's what black people knew. Black people knew y'all got the money. Y'all got the resources. Now, all of a sudden, when it came to how our schools look, the books that you were reading, the uniforms that you had, all those different things, it came down to money. The reason they were fighting Brown versus Board of Education was about money. The reason they fought integration or even our kids sitting next to each other was about money. And the reason we still have inequities in education today is because of money. White parents moving out the suburbs saying, you know what, we want our money to stay in our neighborhoods. We don't care what y'all neighborhoods are like. That's about money. The entire education system is set up based upon property taxes. That's based upon money which is based upon race and wealth. Well, well, money is not the solution for every problem. Let me ask you a question. Money is not are, you, are you in America? It, it's not the solution for every problem. We, are all the federal agencies that share along with the White House, which one shares along with the White House? Which one shares a long yeah, extent? There's that only one federal agency where you can, put, you can play flag football on a White House lawn. I don't know who. Treasure. You want to understand America? White House is power, Treasury is money. Power, money, money, power. Do you know what's right across the street from Treasury? Bank of America. Most of our banking institutions. If you don't think America is about money, that's what America is about money. No, I didn't say America wasn't about money. Well, we've been in a money conversation. I said money doesn't solve all problems. And as I explained to you earlier when we go back to the conversation, I, that's why I said, and as you just said, money explains a lot of America. 
And that's why I say that's when, America. Yeah. When police brutality is a money loser for the government, trust me, the government is interested in stopping. No, I'm going to stop that. I'm saying what's going to stop police brutality. Not money. money no, 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 it is. No, 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 it is money. No, no, it is money. You know what's going to stop police brutality? When taxpayers don't have to pay the bill, where you can take a police officer's pension. Trust me, when a city no longer has to pay the legal fees of a cop, trust me, that cop is going to think twice before he beats somebody with a baton because if that person goes, wait a minute, that's, that's why. I, the cop might also think twice before he enters the neighborhood or enters a dangerous situation. No. That may be the solution. Well, no, no, that cop, that, trust me, if that cop then goes, wait a minute, if I beat somebody. Well, doing it all over, this, all over the country, Roland. You can look at the uh, murder rate in Baltimore after the Freddie Mercury riots. It's been all, all over the country. And that, you know, and that, that, oh, and that was because that those cops did not like the fact that somebody was holding them accountable. That's the problem. And they started doing less police. Yeah, hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So basically they stopped doing their job. So what they basically were saying was, how dare you demonize people who don't make No, no, no. That wasn't demonizing, one Jason. One of the hardest jobs in America. Jason. They, they, so, so, so because cop got indicted, then all of a sudden they... Nah, it's more than indicted. Man. No, that's it. We sit on TV. I'm talking about what's going on with police. When we sit on TV. And act like police are still the worst people on the planet. Listen, in the city of Chicago, they withheld the Laquan McDonald tape for four years. They did not want that tape released. And then they lied. Well, but I know you can go to the point. No, 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 no. I'm showing you the example. The cops in Chicago. I did did something inappropriate. No, not inappropriate. No, not not inappropriate. Laquan McDonald is dead. And the cops lied. And, with the and, and what the cops really did was they said, how dare you indict one of ours? We're going to stop working. They don't want any accountability. That's what most people, Roland. But the these are people, people who have guns and badges. I get it, Roland. Who can take most people. Dude. That is most, they're human beings, Roland. They're I don't want human beings. Look, they raise their hand. But, the, but guess beings. what? That, that the level of power that they have that you don't have. I got it. And you know what? What comes with that badge and that gun is a high level of accountability. And then it, they need to be held accountable. And it can't be, oh, you're demon ivory. No. But a cop should do good, yo, celebrate. But the cops should do bad, you damn right go after them and not coddle them. And I'm not going to excuse it as, uh, it was a mistake or it was not an accident. Because I've actually dealt with the issue. Well, when you said perfection. Personal life. When you bring it. No profession is preferred. None is, none, none is, none is perfect. <laughs> but there are a few professions where you can shoot and kill somebody I and get away it. with it. That's what it is. That's what it is. One of the questions I got to ask you about and that you is. No, 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 no. This is just a couple more questions. Are we at uh, that time? Yeah, they might see much. Six All right, go ahead. Couple, couple more questions. We look at what a number of athletes are doing. Grant Hill, things that he's involved in. Uh, Chris Webber, things that he's involved in. Uh, when I look at uh, the Bennett brothers, I'm looking at athletes who are obviously totally different from a previous generation of athletes because of the level of wealth that they had. I do believe that what we are seeing, and they don't, I don't believe they get the same level of attention. I think that we are seeing the athlete today, frankly, who is doing even more than a significant, a significant number of athletes who were in the 50s and 60s and early 70s, who are actually changing lives of people that frankly doesn't get the level of attention it might that it should get. I'm sure that's true. They, they have far more wealth. They have far more opportunity to do more. So do you believe, though, that you're you in sports? Do you believe that that's also part of the problem in that in this medium, we don't offer a balanced perspective of the black athlete uh, or what many of them are doing, where it's only, well, just a couple here, then a couple here, as opposed to the things that they're doing, opening of schools, what they're doing in terms of with scholarship, what they're doing in terms of the level of investing they're making, what many of them doing in terms of literally rebuilding lots and communities and the projects that they're involved in. Do you believe media could do a much better job of telling that story and not just focus on X's and O's? Yeah, I think they could, and I think they probably do, probably do more of that now. 
But again, does it get traction? Do people, is that where people want to read? Again, sometimes it is supply and demand. Demand dictates what the supply is. Again, I was involved with, uh, you know, the formation of the undefeated. It was about telling a full story about the black athlete. And so, you know, ESPN has a, a website with 40, 50 African-American journalists that's dedicated to telling the full story uh, of African-Americans. I, I think they're trying to do it. So I can't say all of the media has ignored it. Uh, you know, I, I can't, you know, it's a supply and demand issue, but you know, there's a website, the undefeated, the yeah. fully staffed and the ESPN has dedicated a lot of money to that. I think it's trying to tell a full story about the African American athlete. Speaking of that, um, that, that's your greatest failure. Is that my greatest failure? No, I think yeah. one of my greatest success is that they actually launched and there's 40, 50, uh, yeah, but, 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 you, but you didn't launch it. You were fired from it. No, I, I got it. So it happened because trust me, there were people trying to stop it from happening. And the whole issue when we, when I was at ESPN, it was about whether or not they were going to fully fund the issue. That's what the fight was over. Some people didn't want it to happen. I did, and I wanted it to be fully funded with a full staff, just like Brantman and other places. And I had that fight with them. They fired me, but they went ahead and, and launched the site, and they fully funded it. I wanted that argument. So you don't think. You 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 don't think that if you had stayed there, they wouldn't have fully funded. You think you think by firing you, that's what got it fully funded? I think it played a role in it, absolutely, because there were people there that just absolutely didn't want the thing to happen, whether I was involved or not. And then there were extra people gassed up because they didn't want me involved. And so again, in losing that fight, I think, uh, or in having that fight, I think John Skipper at that time realized what was going on. Can't move forward with Lot. Going to get rid of him, but we are going to fully fund this thing. The guy is what? What are the mistakes mistake that you made that, uh, looking back, you wish you had managed it better? I wish I had managed it better. No, because I think I did the things necessary for the site to launch and for it to be fully funded and have a full staff. Are there small things along the way? It's a startup. No, I got it. It's a start. All kinds of things happen. You know, a wrong person got hired here or there. Small things that, yes, I could nitpick or whatever. But in my view, if you really understand the story over there, I did the things necessary for the website to survive. Ownership is a huge piece. And obviously, in terms of the understanding, in terms of being able to control a narrative and tell the story. One of the things that I think is interesting is that when I look at a lot of the comments, a lot of the comments that folks make, and not just folks who make comments on social Newton, people who are in need, people who work with you, folks who used to work with you. And how it make you feel be when they put you in the same category essentially as Clarence Thomas as being a traitor of black people? It's probable, but I can't control what people say over Twitter, all I can do is live my life. Uh, but, you know, it is comical, but I, and I say it's comical, but, you know, Clarence Thomas is a Supreme Court justice. He's a successful person. So it's not uh, the worst thing you could say about me. Clarence Thomas is very successful. He's on the Supreme Court. He has risen to a place of great poverty in American history. Uh, but in terms of selling out my race, that's a joke. That That's... That, that rolled off of me because there's just no truth to it. Yeah, when you are engaged in these debates, when you you being called out by the likes of Martellus Wilder and some other people like that, we had was my 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 tribe Martellus, um, and uh, Marcellus, no 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 not not Ben, not Ben. When you have these debates, what I'm curious about is that do you do you go? You know what? You have my perspective. I screwed that enough. I was wrong. Give me the example. No, I'm asking. I'm asking. No, no, I'm asking you. Have you ever? Have you ever engaged in any of these debates? And where any you say these debates? No, 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 no. no, no. I am speaking wrong. What I'm saying is, have you ever? Any, no, any of them. Have you ever? Have you ever been engaged in any of these debates where you then reflected by saying, you know what? I shouldn't have said this about the athlete. Well, you know what? 
I was. Oh, you talking about this debates on my television show or just any? any? Well, I mean, I was not talking about television because that's where you are largely having these other conversations uh, that people are responding to. Yeah, I think you know my nickname in Kansas City is Jason Flipflop because I flip positions. I react to do information, and so do I come up with the wall of tears from time to time on athletes. Hell yeah, I spout opinions every day, and so I didn't have no. Hey, you know what? I was wall. I come to this or that conclusion. I do it all the time. And speaking of that, I, I, I did see when, when you know, I was looking at the comments after Harvard University and Common Pattern. Why do you believe that what he is doing is because he's trying to find himself? Where, where's, like, what's the basis of that? What's the, what's the basis of that point of view? Because I've seen many, many young people of mixed race who grow up in an environment outside the black community, who have struggled with their identity. Everybody has. And anybody that pretends, anybody black that pretends like they have it encountered that with young people is lying. And so, and again, some things I know about Colin Kaepernick that I will not share or whatever, but he shows all the classic sign of what? He grew up in a white community, raised by white parents, and he's black. That right there is a very complicated upbringing in America. Okay. And that you're going to lead. First of all, whether you're mixed race or not, all young people have identity issues. All. And they go through a process of finding themselves. That's what the college experience in the early part of your life is generally all about. College Kaepernick's are more complicated because of America's racial issue and his upbringing and things like that. And so when I see a guy go from being the party guy that's all tatted up to wah wah, I lose my starting job, and now I'm baby Malcolm X and or Angela Davis, and I got a black fist in the air, it raises someone who's trying to find himself. Or could it be somebody could who be. while the what and that's but see I, the reason I think that's important, because when you articulate that point of view, it should be actually based upon something or substance that's tied to that person. When you say all people, first of all, everybody's different, okay? Every everybody's person different. person goes through trying to find themselves. Yes, and also, and what I'm saying is that there are people out there who might be 18 or 19 or 20 who aren't having the same issue that somebody else who can act in the 20. But to say that about him, and then to say as if, well, it's that, when he's doing these things only because of his girlfriend, things on those lines, and you don't know, and you don't know, you're just throwing something out there. And I'm, I'm, just, I'm just wondering. more than you think. No, well, but I, I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm not going to go chapter and verse. I'm not going to do some deep dive on um, how. But why not? Because, because if you offer that perspective, I don't think it's unfair. Well, well but, but is it not what I, oh, well, I think is unfair? But isn't it unfair for you to make that characterization if it's not based upon fact? I do believe it's based on fact. But if you believe it's based upon fact, but then you don't want to back it up, I, I, I'm not going to share everything that I know or have been told about Colin Kaepernick. It's clear as, well, when I'm not out on some shaky territory looking at this guy. Everybody I know black has seen someone like Colin Kaepernick. Okay, so the fact. Mitch Ray's kid, raised in the suburbs, seen it on my Ball State football team with all these different recruits and guys that come in that don't come from the city, don't have some strong black connection. There's an identity issue that people work through early on right. in their life. He, in my opinion, is still working through those issues. I don't say that so what well, I, I don't say that maliciously or derisively. He's a typical young person. But I, but it but but it comes off as malicious. It it, 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 come, it, come, it comes it comes it comes it, it, it just like this is a fact of life. But it's like that's a, but you know, uh, but that's not how it comes an overweight person. But that's not how it comes off. Some sort of issue that causes them to overeat. But that's how it's not a... So, not so, 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 you're, about so, so you're not concerned about how um, it comes off? Because, because when people hear that, when people hear that, when people hear you associate yeah. who he is and what he has done, and then you could throw in his girlfriend, you give this impression as if this guy, he's being led by other people, as if he hasn't come to that conclusion of himself, and you give this perspective as... Oh, he, like, he's just a CT brother, and, and then with the baby mouth and then, yeah. But, but after the me happened to most everybody I know, 
most so could, every person I know goes through some kind of confused state or di- different state while they're trying to figure out their identity. I think well, his are a bit more pronounced than others, but so I could think it, his background so, is a bit more not active, just like because you know, a very similar background to Obama. But could it not be? Could it not be that you have somebody here who has gone through that? And who has reached the point who has said, this is who I am. This is what I want. You can tell you why. Why? Because you, anything that I reach some conclusion, and this is me, and he ain't weak. But trust me, I can stand up and verbalize it and explain. I don't hide behind Twitter. I don't hide behind private conversations with Roland Martin or whoever else. I come out and stand on it and defend it. No, but James, it. But James, it. that's you. I get it. But also, you don't vote. And he said, that's me. And so here's the deal. It's interesting to me that you want to give space to say, this is me. This is who I am. But you don't want to give space to him. Rome, if you have some opinion about me not vote or me overeating or me about anything, you have a right to that opinion. I'm not going to vote. Lay down a front. Oh my God, Roland! No, no, no. But there are other that they a different. I make a public this. figure. I can have a. He's a public figure. Friends took a highly polarizing position. He stood out there like no, 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 man no, no. enough to I'm be on the with whatever came with. No, no, no. This said he's not. No, no, he's not. No, no. This so, don't, no, no. This don't be on the position. I'm asking you a very specific question oh. for a reason, and that is, when you opine, when you say that. Again, you present, you paint this picture that, y'all, this is nothing but a confused biracial. He don't know what he's doing. He's crazy. Uh, he just is all of that. That's actually what, that's how it comes off. You know how many athletes, NFL athletes that have told me that at private? The, I'm, most of them. And so I'm not out here on some island all by myself. And there's most rational people can see it and express it privately. I just happen to say it publicly. He's a public figure that took one of the most polarizing positions in the history of sports. And so with that comes along some pushback and some people questioning your motive. When Muhammad Ali changed his name from Kansas K to Muhammad Ali, joined the Nation of Islam, said I'm not going to uh, get in the NFL or in the, in the uh, military draft, that's a strong core right. And you know what he came out with? He stood all the And you know what's interesting? And people said all kinds of things about Muhammad Ali. And here's and what he is his bold and he is, hey, he's just addicted to this religious thing. And here's what I've learned. That's what people do. And, here, and here's what I've learned. What I've learned is when we want to, it's very convenient, very convenient when we want to compare a cabinet to Ali because you want him to speak out. But then you take offense when others compare Kaepernick to Ali. You're literally bolstering your point of view by using Ali versus Kaepernick. Yet when others, because you said it earlier in terms of, oh, people want to see him as maybe not the match with Muhammad Ali. Right. You are using Ali to justify your argument. But when somebody else uses Ali just for the argument by Kaepernick, you say they're wrong. Roar. I'm saying he's not my honor lady because he won't stand out here and defend his position. Yeah, that's but, my opinion. And what I'm saying is, what it also gives off to people is that you have a personal animus against Kaepernick. And what I'm saying is, it may be that there are people, and I, I mean, in, in what I do, I've met people. I've met individuals who I just said the interview the Reverend Dr. Jane Lawson, one of the greatest organizers we've known, turned nine years old last month. If you ask the average person, James Lawson, they'd be like, I don't know what you're talking about. But you know what? Lawson, Nashville movement. You know what Lawson said? Lawson said, Roland, on my last minute of Dr. King, he's on the front row with Pewitt, or front row on the church. And he says, I was on the back row. There are some people that some will be loud and outspoken. Others will lead quietly. They're different modes of leading. And so I don't necessarily think a person has to always hold news conferences, do sit down communities, and be out there chanting, talking, because some people actually want to lead with their actions as opposed to just talking. And there are others who just talk who don't have any action to back it up. 
I got it rolling, but as a broadcaster and a critic, I have a right. It's it's a man. No, I understand. It was speak. Oh, of course. Say, I don't like this or respect it. It makes me think he doesn't really believe it. It's just something he's doing. Which also I think doesn't give enough space to their people who actually, that's how they present themselves. Doesn't even, that, that's, a, that's your opinion. I, I don't yeah. have a No, no, that's just, it's not just my opinion. I'm actually ba basing it on people who actually have. Okay, done. but that's your opinion. I don't have a problem with yeah. it. I'm not that's not my opinion. That's where it is. Why are you offended by mine? No, what I'm, no, what I'm offended by is when we present this beauty that somehow oh, that he, this is another reason with no, 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 that somehow he's bad, he's wrong, and you, I mean, you, you, the good team send off is there's a personal animus against it. Reading your, reading your tweets, reading your tweets, read it. No, 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 but today, 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 I, I, listen, I've been, I've been doing media since I was 14 years old. Got it, bro. You're, you're, no, 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 what I'm saying is, I was just fun. No, no, actually, I'm not more the content I'm Roland Martin. So I'm making the point that I get being a critic, but, there are both, it comes off as if it's more case. personal. To check, there's a guy named Carl Peterson in Kansas City. Mm -hmm. Gentleman on Kansas business City side. Chief. He was the general manager of president of Kansas City Chief. I used to light him up every day in the Kansas City stuff. Every day. All this made my name, criticizing Kansas City Chief. He, his lighting of the Kansas City Chief. And he used to go, oh, I think this personal. I think this personal. I think this personal. No, it's just my job. This is how I do it. I used to, and Carl Peterson, some white dude again. Slave Samuel, almost every day. You can go ask anybody in Kansas City. I'm a critic. If I disagree with someone, I express it. Should Colin Kaepernick be back in the NFL? Shouldn't he be back together? Yeah, Mike's not about shit. Okay. If you, when you look at Nathan Peterman and throwing 82 career passes and 10 interceptions, do you believe that Colin Kaepernick has the skill set to be an NFL player? Yeah, Colin Kaepernick has enough talent to play in the NFL. Do you believe that? And he's created, he's become such a polarized deal because the NFL world at the end, it's just a TV show, man. That's all it is. And the NFL is going to do what's best for television rate. And if they think Colin Cabaret is bad for NFL race, they're not going to hire him. He's just an actor in a TV well, show. What I also understand is that they also like winning. And that is this year. If somebody he gets, win. it's a roller. He didn't win in San Francisco, so don't have. That I said, no. Well, he did win in San Francisco. Then, of course, we had that last season. Or let's also keep in mind, the whole team sucked. I, I mean, I, the, the, the remember it was two and fourteen. The show. whole team sucked. It's a TV show, right? I got the you. That the offensive line, the defensive line, the linebackers, the what? The whole team sucked. Now you do, you will admit that, right? I got it. Well, well, right, right. Uh, no, I'm just saying. But the whole team did suck. Well, <laughs> I got it. I, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm not going to do your deal and lay out my credentials of the sport. No, I'm not laying out the credentials. No, I'm, I'm just saying if you win 2 and 13, the whole team sucked. Not just him. Not just him. But again, Kaepernick doesn't show up and win his follow him. Not particularly at 30 when he's been out of the league for a couple of years. I don't know if he makes a difference in terms of anybody winning or losing the game. And so, is he good enough? The only way you know that if he actually gets a shot. Is he good enough to be in the NFL talent wise? Yes. He's created such a distraction around himself, and he's created the belief along the NFL ownership that he's bad for ratings, and they're running a television show that's about rating. Actors get written out of plots all the time. But we have, we used to have a look. When Eric Reed came back uh, and took the knee, you still have Kenny Stills and some other different players. Uh, the reality is, I think the difference here is that you still have other players who still are, are protesting. I think in his case, they're saying, no, no, we're going to make an example out of this one. But does he actually... Uh, uh, for them started this. Well, what did I complicated. But no, no, I just when Colin Kaepernick shows up on any team, there's an instant conversation about should he be your starting quarterback. And most of the NFL has him pegged as a backup quarterback, and they don't want a backup quarterback who instantly starts a conversation about whether he should be started. Well, I tell you right now, coaches that don't want that distraction. And that has to. I tell you what, there are some teams out there that I see them who absolutely who are just terrible with quarterbacks. Well, well, we're, especially yeah. Buffalo. Well, I, but of course, we hear you don't know that much about football, though. Yeah. Not, not much at all. Actually, I, I can watch. Well. Actually, yes, I can watch. As, 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 I, I, well, I, I know enough to know if I see a quarterback who kills horrible. And look, I had to I had to sit through Brock Osweiler with the Houston Texans. Oh, was he don't Lord default. Uh, actually, the overwhelming the majority of people mm, in America they don't know much about football. Well, I I know enough about football to know why to see a bad quarterback versus somebody who actually has succeeded before. But 
The decision is just more complicated. No, I, no, I understand that. But don't act as if I don't know the difference between a bad quarterback and, and a quarterback is the win. What goes into decision making about quarterbacks? It's really more complicated just add a bit. Oh, I saw, I saw I've never put general managers or, you know. Okay. All right. I'm just saying that. Shit, I've talked to bankers. I don't know nothing about bankers. I've talked to. We got a one concierge that said, I came to the concierge. I, I get it. You talk to somebody. No, no, I just talked to him. But also, again, but you talk about a lot of stuff that you also don't have a background with. All right, Jason. Well, it's going to be very interesting to uh, see how this scene plays out. Uh, and also, we'll see what happens with uh, these players. And I think, um, I think these players are going to surprise you in terms of those who uh, are very much engaged in the pieces they're doing in the community. Uh, and I give them hell of a lot more credit. I think that you do. I, I think players have been involved in their communities and doing community work, particularly in the NFL, for decades. I, I've covered the Kansas City Chiefs in the NFL. Mm -hmm. Player involvement in their communities and community work has been going on for a decade. Right now, there's a lot of media attention on it, and it seems brand new to everybody else, but it's been going on for years. Yeah. Well, it was brand new, but the most people don't pay attention. But again, I think these guys... I think this generation of athletes, when the, when, the rec, when the record is told, which actually is not always told in the present, people are going to realize the things that they have, they have been involved in and have done that actually is advancing and paving the way for the next generation of athletes that I think is totally different than before. And, so, and that's the point of history. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks a bunch.